Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095 Basic Algebra. This is section 6.6. .6. It's broken into two videos. This is going to be part one. And we're going to introduce functions. Now, we're familiar with linear equations, which are a type of function. And uh, we're familiar with graphing them as well. So if we're to graph this, well, since it's in uh, slope intercept form, we know at least one point, and that's the intercept. When x is 0, y is 5. So I'm going to write 0, 5. This is the y-intercept. So I can go ahead and go on my graph and plot that point 0, 5. Now if we want another point, because we need at least 2 to graph any line, maybe I say if x is 1, and I plug that in, and I get 9. 1, 9 would be another value on here. So at x equals to 1, we'd have the value 9. And maybe just to make sure that I'm on the right track, maybe I choose another value, let's say negative 1, and I get positive 1. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4 plus 5 is positive 1. And I can see, yep, they're in a nice straight line. So I can go ahead and graph that line. This is a function. And we're going to explore why this is a function and use some tools to evaluate functions. And we're going to also discuss domain and range. So let's first, first define what a function is. A function is having an input value. We put it into the function to get an output value, a y value. And we use x and y for our coordinate plane. So if I put in an x into the function, I get out a y. And that's exactly what we did to get these ordered pairs. If I put in the value of x of 0, I got out 5. If I put in 1, I get out 9. If I put in negative 1, I get out positive 1. That is a function. Well, a function is defined as having, for each input value, we have one output value. Or it, each input value corresponds to at least one value. Now, we also have relations. And relations are very similar. If we have an input value, we get out an output value. But sometimes that output value can correspond to more than one other value. So maybe we have a y1 and a y2 for the same value of x. So this would, one input would correspond to two different points. So that's the difference between a function and a relation. So let's go ahead and look at defining the difference between a function and relation. And before we do that, I just want to say uh, all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. Now, a real world analogy to that is all cars are automobiles, but not all automobiles are cars. Some could be motorcycles or trucks or something of that nature. So to define that, essentially what we're looking for is x corresponds to y, it's a relation and only a relation and not a function if x repeats x for this value and the same x for another value. So let's look at some examples where we have to define whether it's a function or relation. And then we're going to go and define a few other terms here. So we have this set. And notice the set notation. We have it in braces here. We have a set of points, and we want to determine, is this a function or is it only a relation? So to do that, I look at the x values. I have negative 1, 0, negative 2, and 5. Each of my x values are unique. So they correspond to a y, and there's no repeating x value. So we can say this is a function because the x's are unique. So now we're going to define domain. Domain is the set of all the input values. When we talk about domain, we're referring to the x values, our input value. So if we're asked to find domain, we just have to determine what the x values are. And it's a general rule that we put it in least to greatest. So I look at my x values, negative 1, 0, negative 2, and 5. And I say, well, what's the smallest value? Negative 2. The next value would be negative 1. The next value would be 0. And the last value would be 5, from least to greatest. These are my input values. We call that the domain, the set of all the input values. And we can use braces here as well. So the domain is negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 5. Range is defined as all the output values. 
Well, the output values we have are 7, 6, 2, and 6. And I want to write those in least to greatest form as well. So my smallest value is 2. My next value would be 6, but it repeats. That's OK when it's dealing with range. It's still a function because the x was unique. The y doesn't necessarily have to be unique. And I don't have to repeat the value for range. Just what are the unique ones? 2, 6, and 7. So range is just the output, the y values. So domain deals with x, and range deals with the y's. All right, let's look at this one here. We're first going to determine whether it's a function or a relation. Now, the last one was a function because the x were unique. Well, if we look at this one, what are our x values? What are our domain? Let's determine that right now. I have negative 2, negative 2, 6, and negative 7. If I write it from least to greatest, I have negative 7. Then I would have negative 2. And I notice right now that I have two values of negative 2. This value repeats. It is not unique. That tells me right away, before I've even finished the domain, this is not a function. It is a relation. And my last value to finish off the domain is 6. So I have these values for my domain. It is not a function. All right, and now let's do the range, because we can determine the domain of range of any relation or function. So our range, well, I have the values of 4, 3, 4, and 8. My smallest value is 3, followed by 4, which repeats. And that's OK when it deals with range. And finally, 8. So that would be my range, the output value. So these are the inputs, and these are the outputs. What about something like this? Now, you notice the set notation here. This says the ordered pairs, x and y, such that y equals 4x plus 5. That's the equation we saw uh, a little while ago. Well, when we're determining the domain and range of this value, and we already determined that this was a function, uh, line all linear equations are functions except for 1. And we'll discuss that uh, in the next video. But if we look at this here, we know it's a function. What are the input values. What is the domain? Well, this is where I have to think about it. Well, what values can I put in for x that I would find on a number line? I can put in any value for x and plug it in and get out some value for y. Well, if that's the case, if I can put in any value of x, there's no domain restrictions. So it would be all real numbers. Maybe I write it in interval notation from negative infinity to positive infinity. That is my domain. I can put in any value of x. Or I could write it as that symbol right there, which means all real numbers. What is its range? Well, if we think about our graph of a line, and our line looked something like that, it goes up to positive infinity in the y direction. It continues to go up and up and up. And here, it also goes down. It continues down to negative infinity. Well, for this line, its range is from negative infinity to positive infinity as well. Or I could say it's all real numbers. So for this particular function, our y equals 4x plus 5, the domain is all real numbers, and the range is all real numbers. I can put in any value of x, left or right, on our number line, and I will result in getting a value that's positive or negative to infinity, depending on what value I put in for domain. So we have domain and range. All right, let's look at a new concept, function notation. Now, function notation essentially is as simple, simple as this. For a y value, we can replace it with a new notation, which says f of x. We use this notation when we're dealing with functions. And that's why it was important to be able to identify whether we have a function or a relation. If we have a relation, we cannot use this notation because it's function notation. This f tells me it is a function that depends on the input. What value are we putting into the function? Now, the importance of function notation. Why do we use it? Why would we go and ruin this perfectly good system of using y? with using this. Well, what if we have two different lines? And if we have to compare, compare them, I want to make sure that 
I'm dealing with two different lines. I want to have a, uh, an accounting practice. So maybe if I have a second line, I could call it something like g of x. Now I know when I see f of x equal to something and g of x equal to something, I can determine that these are two different lines. If they both said y, well, then they would be equal to each other. Because if y is y, then whatever y is equal to would be equal to. And we can't always say that if we have two different lines. So how do we use function notation? If it's as simple as saying, well, we're just going to replace y with this new notation. Maybe it's f of x or g of x or h of x. So if y equals 4x plus 5, we'd have the ordered pairs x's and y's. Well, with function notation, I can replace the y with this notation, f of x. And that's how it's read, f of x, because the function depends on what x is. So it's the same thing. We just replace the notation. And we do the same thing here. If y is f of x, then we'd get ordered pairs that are x, f of x. We just replace that y with that new notation. So using that notation, it actually helps us to distinguish what is our input value. So let's look at this example. Now, since we're already familiar with this equation, 4x plus 5, we just replace the y with f of x. This is a function dependent on x. f of x equals 4x plus 5. When I see the notation written like this, it says f of 3. It's no longer f of x. This actually tells me what my input is. So how do I work with that to find its value? I put in the value it tells me. f of 3, evaluate the function using this value. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 5 is 17. So I can then say, as an ordered pair, I can say my input was 3. My output, f of 3, which was 17. It's still an ordered pair, an x and a y, except now it's x and f of x. What if I have f of negative 2? Well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the function, because f of x is that value, and replace my x with a negative 2. Negative, or 4 times a negative 2 is a negative 8, plus 5 is a negative 3. So I can say my input was negative 2. My output, my f of x, would be negative 3. So f of negative 2 is negative 3. All right, what if I have this? Maybe I'm evaluating a function for another variable or even another function altogether. Well, if this notation tells me, replace the x value with this, evaluate it for this value, I'm going to do the same thing. 4 times whatever's in these parentheses, I'm going to put it into the equation just like that, 4 times this value. And then I can do some simplifying. Use the Distributive property, 4 times a is 4a. 4 times 1 is 4 plus that 5. And we can combine some like terms, 4a plus 9. So what does that mean? Well, essentially, we have 4, or f of a plus 1 equals 4a plus 9. It looks totally different from what we started with. If I wrote that as an ordered pair, it would be my input, a plus 1, that was my input, my x value. And my output, what I ended up getting, 4a plus 9. It's still an ordered pair. It looks a little intimidating. But that's essentially the process of using function notation. It actually helps us keep track of what we're putting in and what we're going to get out. Let's look at an example. And here we'll see it's g of x this time. Well, f of x was 4x plus 5. g of x is denoting x squared plus 1. And we can use this notation to evaluate any function. This is a nonlinear function. We can still use that same concept, even for higher ordered polynomials, x squared plus 1. This says g of negative 1. It tells me the input is negative 1. So I'm just going to rewrite the equation. But instead of x, I'm going to put in negative 1. And whenever you do a substitution or evaluate something, use parentheses. It'll help you keep track of any signs. If we notice here, it's negative 1. If the x value is being squared, 
the entire input value has to be squared. And we should know that negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which would be a positive 1 plus this 1 equals 2. So I can say g of negative 1 equals 2. Or I could write it as an ordered pair. My input was negative 1. My output was 2. Let's do the same thing here. Well, instead of x, it says a. So I'm just going to replace my x value with what this tells me to put in there. So I have a squared plus 1. And if I square a, I just get a squared. But I still use those parentheses initially just in case so I don't make any sign errors. And I know I have to distribute if there was a coefficient. So use those parentheses. And if you have to, when you simplify them, they'll go away. All right, so this has been 6.6 .6 part 1. Please stay tuned for 6.6 .6 part 2, where we'll actually explore functions in greater detail. Thank you for watching.